Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just changed the mode. Uh, we've been talking, you've been hearing architects and uh, real estate uh, developers. Uh, I'm going to give you something from the engineering perspective. I'm going to change the mode slightly. Uh, the, my topic today is do's and don'ts in designing structural steel buildings. Uh, there are actually basic points in engineering for when you are designing buildings, which everyone knows, but you tend to forget or you tend to miss out on certain things. So I'm just listing them. It's a very basic uh, presentation, but it's very important to take care of these issues when you are designing a steel structure. Uh, advantage is structural steel, basically structural steel is a basic engineering material used since many years due to its characteristics and versatility. Basically, I'm going to just give you a little points on steel uh, uh, specifications which uh, highlight the versatility of steel. It possesses high strength in tension and compression. Compression members whose capacity is reduced when its slenderness ratio is increased. But high ductility permitting large reformations even after yield stress is reached. High value of modulus of elasticity, which is about 8 to 10 times that of concrete of different grades. Easier for making connections with structural steel members. Faster in fabrication and erections, having good scope for extension in any direction by means of connections, vertically, horizontally, or inclined also. And abroad, structural steel is widely used in buildings for bridges. Structural steel is used also in combinations in concrete and steel for in, in, in bridge uh, designs. Based on my experience, the important point now is that basically designing of structural steels are a few which I'm mentioning now, which would be basically to popularize the work of steel in this industry. A few of our projects which we have done, which we have used a combination of steel and concrete, and this building is capital at BKC. We have used this, uh, 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 the main structures, steel uh, frames in uh, composite steel design, post tension slabs, and we have used a concrete ring with a diagrid in steel. This is, of course, mentioned uh, now by uh, Mr. Bansal, Prestige Tower. Uh, this is a building which we have been doing at uh, Pedder Road, which is uh, basically a National Museum of Indian Cinemas at Mumbai. It's a complete steel structure. And the Wankade Stadium, where we got an award for the design uh, because of the cantilevers, which we used uh, in pipe sections. Now, uh, the first point is typically, which I want to uh, emphasize on, is type of connections and detailing. As far as possible, we should try to use all joints in bolted connections in order to have speedy constructions and with the desired work efficiency. All welded uh, joints shall be factory done under controlled conditions where it can be tested and proper QC can be implemented. There may be a few cases where weld on site cannot be avoided. We should try to minimize the welding activity at site since as testing or welding is a must and it's time consuming. Basically, uh, these are the main uh, points which we need to keep in mind when we are designing the building. And even when we are doing the analysis, in, uh, in the computer on ETAB model or STAD, we need to see the end conditions are chosen accordingly to the site connections which we have uh, uh, you know, uh, designed or planned. Basically, this is the type of connections which we have. We have beam to uh, uh, core connections, uh, steel beams to columns. The, uh, see, these are the different types of beam connections which are there. Uh, composite sections, efficient use of combination of concrete and structural steel. Basically, composite columns are most efficient in many ways and the structural designer should try to make the, this advantage to his use to achieve the reduced cross-section area of structural steel in columns and hence economical. Basically, what we like to tell you is that when we are using composite steel, the cross-section area of the steel which we have in the col concrete column can be reduced and you can reduce the cost accordingly. Eliminates requirement of fire protection. Since you go for composite steel, automatically you don't need fire protection and associate cost when steel is encased in concrete. 
protection to steel from severe exposure conditions, especially in coastal cities like Mumbai, stiffening of structural system against lateral sway. The point is what happens is that you can, because of the columns which are composite, it can, uh, and you create a combination with the cores, you can basically avoid lateral uh, uh, bracing systems and this, this, this bracing systems which can be eliminated by a combination of composite core, uh, cores with composite columns. These are the type of different type of sections which we can use. Of course, you could use also pipe sections and in case the, uh, and pour concrete inside. Sometimes when you have massive pillars or bollard columns, you can use a combination of that also. Another very uh, important role is that basically the combination of composite systems to columns, regular columns, you can actually make up 8 to 9% uh, carpet area saving uh, because you can basically what has happened is you can have I sections which are of different grades and you can reduce the columns thus by increasing the carpet area of a structure for sale point of view. Constructability always to be kept in mind. Always design the steel structures keeping constructability in mind. They will reduce the time for erection, thereby resulting that time efficiency which is a must in steel structures to overcome the extra cost over compared to RCC structures. Use of identical steel members sections to a maximum possible extent so as to minimize handling of various steel of sections. Thus, what we are trying to say is basically try to make a geometry in such a way that the sections which we have are standardized sections, standardized lengths and cutouts according to the MEP cutouts which we have. So we can have basically uh, the standardized service cutouts, routing, etc. trying to work out structural system which standardize the cut lengths for majority of the members. Positioning the splice connection in the composite column just above the slab is another important point so it's easily one can connect with the uh, columns right up to the top so it becomes easier for the person to make the slice splicing. Sequencing of erection is a very important point. Basically what you need to do is you need to make a combination of the fitter, the placement, bar placement person, the sheeting person, the concreting person and the fire person, uh, fire proofing person. So basically this uh, layout like this one would basically try to work out uh, uh, different sequencing. That makes the project more efficient. What you do is that you lift the columns, you put in the uh, decking material, then you have another uh, gang to put the steel. So the sequencing becomes very important as you go up. Then you start encasing the columns below. At the same time, you make the framework on top. And this is how you, you make sure that every gang, that is the fire gang, the metal decking gang, the steel uh, uh, meshing person and the uh, uh, erection persons all have some level of work at every time so that you can squeeze the, the full uh, critical path of the actual project. And that's how you go up and this is the way you can basically try to see how you can optimize the time in the project. Now fire protection also becomes a very, very important point and also basically it's a costlier venture so how do we circumvent how do we work on that also fire protection basically is a, in is a must in all steel structures and i believe as per the dc rules you need a 2 hour fire rating basically and try to work out the most efficient way of protecting your structure how do you reduce this cost and yet meet the specification if you go for composite columns and concrete core and shear walls your verticals are all taken care of basically for the beams, we must use cement-based vermiculite fire protection or equivalent which is cheaper than intumescent paint. You can use intumescent paint when your steel, uh, uh, you know, columns are exposed or structure is exposed. Uh, like I think uh, one of our colleagues had shown, uh, shown one of these projects which were with the jumbo columns which had come from Japan. Now those columns were basically fully exposed columns, the architect intent was to see a slender. So those columns we had to put intumescent paint because it was exposed yet needed to be fire protected. The designer must also take into account the exposure conditions of the structure members which is indoors or outdoors. Now there's a fallacy basically, indoors the fire rating goes up because what happens the heat 
temperature goes up and so you need to have a, a design a thicker uh, what do you call layer but as you go out when it's exposed and the fire temperatures don't go to a higher extent you may have to keep the thickness the same because it's now under climate exposure so there is a problem on corrosion issues so it's you got to you got to look at all these points when you are uh, designing for the fire heating the designer must take in uh, the the fire protection thickness would vary as per the exposure conditions and and durations of fire heating of half hour one hour or two hours etc this is the different ways of these are the cutouts which we have kept uh, for the mep so that you gain a, uh, your headroom okay now basically obviously this requires a lot of planning scrupulous planning in uh, your base you steel structures require initial planning and drawings one must carefully prepare designs in advance and in close co coordination with architects mep consultants to incorporate all details tools using bim tecla software that's available nowadays should be used to understand the connection details in advance because the connection details sometimes gets very complex especially when you have space frames trusses arches there therefore a lot of time uh, should be spent initially uh, with with helps the contractor for seamless construction the this importance of planning also needs to be conveyed to our clients for their support because with the client support with the changes they keep on making they need to understand that all these issues should be ironed out from day one later on modifications and alterations though possible in 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 steel is time consuming and becomes expensive it's easy to add a member or a plate or disconnect a member in steel structures but this shows a lack of detailed study during planning stage these are the type of complex uh, details which we could only do because we use tecla and uh, other uh, bim uh, softwares in order to perceive the connections before actual construction material choice now material choice becomes very important as uh, uh, mr bansal also was mentioning high strength plates or sections should be used in design since they are now available with many companies like jsw tata corus asla mittal nippon etc it reduces the tonnage requirements and the cost too the sections required are much smaller so the end user gets larger carpet area and more headroom which can be a usp for the project only certain specific special conditions are required which need to follow while using them basically electrodes welding procedures your qc uh, 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 quality uh, control uh, measures have to be uh, taken care of plus of course if the thickness goes up there there some stress reductions are required when you are designing you got to take cater to all that high grade plates of sections of 355 410 450 mpa are now available in the market designer must take advantage of the same uh, you need to do this planning well in advance so that you can order the quantities accordingly because the tonnage requirements and everything is known from before so there shouldn't be any problem procuring the material also you have different types of sheets decking sheets available in the market uh these are for shallow decking and this is basically a deep decking system which is not available in india but you can import them we have used them for the intercontinental hotel in marine drive in bombay where uh, basically you can uh, span about 4 4 and 1/2 meters without any secondary beams and uh, it helps you to uh, it's like a rolls royce of steel decking it's a flat slab in steel basically you don't see any beams because it's you use asmb beams asymmetrical beams the lower flange is larger than the top flange so you can the the deck rests on the bottom flange rather than resting on the top flange so there are, so you you have a lot of different materials utilization depending on what you want to use for that particular building or structure structural steel ideal for large spans and large uh, la larger headrooms now this is always a challenge for designer we always comparing rcc flat slab with steel buildings so the challenge is how to handle the headroom because every time you are a loser because of the i sections and the spans being large the depths uh, of the beams are more and uh, uh, the way to circumvent and try to see how you can match with the uh, uh, rcc flat slab system is by uh, to make the designs efficiently try to use larger spans as far as possible so that efficiency of the section uses fully utilized in case of high strength steel the deflections can be controlled by using pre camber 
what we can do is we can use pre camber then in that case what happens you can always face we basically get a smaller section for the same span and you can land up getting a more headroom in order to address headroom issues seems uh, sees that all mep cutouts also should be incorporated in the steel section itself what we all need to provide is false ceiling below bottom below the bottom flange of the section in this way we can resolve the headroom efficiency issue which is usually a deterrent whenever we discuss with our clients they always look at pros and cons because of this and with these different ways of handling you can circumvent the uh, 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 basically uh, uh, the the headroom problem now lateral load resistance structures problems arising out of lateral loads can be solved by providing bracing providing a stable concrete core system or providing a composite system or a combination of the above this will have to be worked out in conjunction with the client and architect because this uh, the bracing system like basically gives uh, um, expresses the form of the building also so basically it has to be in conjunction with the architect since it does not does impact the form of the structure and built up area provided to the end user the lateral structural system plays an important role in the speed of construction and cost too it's very crucial part of the design and should be thought of initially weighing all the pros and cons before taking a decision in favor of building construction in structural steel i hope the above points in this paper express at least the basic issues which can help in uh, in you know designing a structural steel building which will make the steel uh, more commonly used in our industry in future thank you